Uh, morning guys. Today we're going to be talking about something uh, rather controversial and we might get a few, uh, few comments on this video. Today we're going to be talking about the great white shark, the big death, the big eye, the, uh, the reason, reason Steven Spielberg made all his money from Jaws. Um, Carcharodon carcarius, also known as a white pointer in some places. They are a very charismatic species. They can look through, they've got this big black eye that actually, when you, when you see them in person like that, it actually looks straight into your soul. It's one of the, the most sort of inspiring species you'll ever find. It's just, it's, they've, they've got such a, a presence around them that, that it's more than just, just a shark. He's got, you hear a great white, people sort of get that little tingle inside of them. Not in a good way always, but anyway. Um, like we mentioned, Jaws did give them a very bad rep. Uh, sharks are not actively hunting people, so let's just get that out of the way. They are not man-eaters by nature, they're man-eaters by curiosity. So, anyway, little, little side note. In terms of the shark, um, very similar to your, your Mako sharks. They're in the same sort of family. Um, big tubular bodies, extremely, extremely powerful fish, very large jaws gigantic teeth, um, very, very sharp. They're designed to hunt, uh, they've got a very white belly, that's where they get the name Great White, that, that white, white, white belly. It's, it's actually insane how white they are. Um, they've got a gigantic tail. The scoot area right at the back between their tail is, if you've ever seen a big one, you can just imagine how, how large it would be to try and grab. So, um, your maximum size, the maximum recorded size, um, there was one caught in Hans Bay with, uh, in a purse seine net. The guys were actually purse seining for other fish and they managed to snag this, this shark. Was all of 1,241 kilos. Um, she was a, a female great white that measured 5.4 meters total length. So it was estimated she was over six, but anyway, that is uh, 1.2 tons of shark. You can just imagine the kind of damage that thing can do ramming a, a, a seal at, at high speed. Um, otherwise, the world angling record is 1.2 uh, 1 tons, so 1,208 kilos, I think it was exactly, caught in Australia, uh, Western Australia. And, but they have seen a lot bigger fish than that. They, that's just the recorded, actual documented uh, size. Your, that fish would probably have been also about over 50 years of age, so they're very, very slow growing. Um, they grow to a really ripe old age. I mean, 50 is a very, very old fish. Um, the size is also quite a debatable issue because, like most things, everything, as we mentioned, the presence of the great white at the beginning, um, stuff tends to get blown out of proportion. So you'll hear guys talking about, ah, oh, no, I saw a great white was over 10 meters in length or over 9 meters in length or something like that. Maybe, it's possible, um, but officially on record, six meters is sort of going to be the maximum tap out sort of uh, length that you're going to get to these, and those are going to be females. They do grow bigger than the males. Um, but yeah, they, they are a very big shark. They designed, the, what they eat is bony fish, so your normal fish that you guys catch, they're called teleosts, your cartilaginous uh, fish, so your sharks and your rays, makes up a big portion of their diet. Um, then they also eat squid. Um, the smaller guys might even feed on crustaceans if they want to, but the, the main diets of your adults, so the big girls, are going to be your marine mammals, so ideally seals. And that sort of plays into where you're going to find them. You do get them in the tropics at some stages. So, I mean, we get, we, the great whites have been caught all the way up into Mozambique um, in nets and things like that. But you're really going to find them in that cold, temperate water. And the whole reason behind that is, generally in cold, temperate seas, you get a lot of uh, biomass, not a lot of biodiversity. So a lot of single species, not a lot of multiple species. So that sort of plays into the larger mass supports bigger animals, so it supports your seals, which then form the, ba the dietary basis of the great white. So that really, that's where you're going to find them. So Cape Town is sort of the hub for them. Um, there are little breeding areas. Algoa Bay is thought to be nursery for the smaller guys. Um, so that a marine protected area there would be great. Um, but in general, with their movement structure, marine protected areas housing smaller areas isn't really going to help them with them moving around. Um, but yeah, they are 
a migratory species. They do move all over the world. We've got individuals that have been tagged here in South Africa that have gone all the way across to Australia. So that's a very big swim. Now, the big thing about a great white, they are cold-blooded, but what they've got, which is very interesting compared to other sharks, which allows them to swim in colder and deeper waters, is they've got a net of um, capillaries, so your small veins, all along the back muscle. Um, so the two fillets that run along the back, um, big tubes like that, and with their swimming, your muscle produces heat. And that heat now gets transferred back into their blood, which actually gives them warmer blood, allows them to swim faster, swim further, and swim deeper. So it's almost like a natural regulation of their blood temperature. By swimming faster, they're getting more energy, well, not more energy, but more, more heat built up, and they, it allows them to, to carry on swimming for much longer than other sharks would when they struggle when it gets cold. Um, your, prior to your protection in 1991, they used to be hunted for trophies. Um, obviously, the release of jaws pushed a lot of people to, to want to kill a lot of sharks, but they, they were mainly hunted for their jaws, for that, that presence that we talk about. It's like almost a mystical shark. Um, they are commonly targeted, um, and now that brings us on to the, the legality of all of this. The law states that as soon as you know that you've hooked a great white, you have to cut the line. Whether it's a thousand meters out, whether it's ten meters out, the line has to be cut. Now, that is the legislation, that's how it sits. Your fishing license also states that you have made yourself aware of all your species and all your targeted species. So anything that you target and said, I didn't know that it was X, Y, Z, you are held liable for that. So that's what it says on your fishing license. So if you read the law terms and conditions on the bottom, which not a lot of people do, uh, ignorance is not your friend, you cannot claim it in uh, any form of legal battle. So, that aside, that's the legal side of it. My personal opinion um, is similar to a lot of other competitive rock and surf anglers, is that I personally believe it's a lot safer for the shark that you, if you do hook them by mistake, you're not allowed to target them. Remember that, you're not allowed to target them. If you do hook them by mistake, it's a lot better off for the shark that you land it safely unhook it and release it. But that is my personal opinion. That is not the opinion of ASVN or any Kingfisher brand or anything. Um, but yeah, as we mentioned, legality, as soon as you know, you have to cut the line. So the great white, uh, an absolutely beautiful species, illegal to target or land. Um, so yeah, get out there, maybe go shark cage diving, see how it, how it goes. Um, there have been some negative impacts on that, so maybe not shark cage diving, maybe just go in the boat, have a look. Um, and yeah, the great white. Beautiful species, very charismatic, something you need to look into. Cheers.